Hi everyone, this is Ed O'Keefe, and welcome to the Ed O'Keefe Show. Today, I have a great friend of mine, Roland Frazier. And um, Roland and I are going to be talking about mindset, money, relationships, the power of leverage, and whatever else we dive into. Um, I met Roland first, we first met through Warm, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. So, with, uh, through Perry, Perry Belcher, Ryan Dice, and the uh, Mastermind um, was is that with the idea incubator or is digital that? marketer okay digital marketer and um we've done some seminars together but um roland's a really interesting interesting guy because you'd never think um he's as smart as he is because he doesn't talk a lot unless he's in kind of closed group format that's why i stole him <laughs> and i we're on a one-on-one but um what I'd like to do is I'm going to actually go through a little bit of uh, your background. Okay. And then I'll flip it to you, and then we'll just go. Sure. So so your LinkedIn profile says you started out selling real estate when you were 18. Yep. And gradually moved into syndications of real estate and business investments. Correct. Roland held real estate, insurance, and security licenses and did leverage buyouts while, he, while you were still in college? I did, yeah. Wow. Yeah. After law school, uh, you started your own practice and grew between your top firms. And it sounds like your specialization was purely entrepreneurs, business owners, and exactly and in the marketing and entertainment. And so that evolved into kind of direct response marketing, producing infomercials, or being a part of infomercials with Simon and Schuster. Yeah. Well, what what happened was uh, was in in practicing. Uh, law, I ended up representing a lot of people like Tony Robbins and uh, Dennis Waitley and people oh, that were Dennis, in, right? in the direct oh, wow. response yeah, yeah, yeah. industry. Um, and so uh, Les Brown, uh, but just a whole bunch of those people yeah. that were in that kind of uh, space. And so through Tony, I met um, uh, Guthy Rinker and we ended up doing a couple of my partners at the law firm that, that I had started um, and I did production for 14 infomercials, I believe, with Guthy Ranker and two with KTEL Direct. And um, it just I, I guess I just had an entrepreneurial yeah. uh, crowd. And being an entrepreneur myself, I saw that there were opportunities to do things. So yeah. when we were doing those uh, negotiations with Guthy Ranker and they said, well, we've got uh, really one in five, roughly, of the infomercials we've got that we put out make it. Uh, and my partners and I said, you know, well, what if we funded those and you give us the ones that you think are going to be successful and we'll fund them and act as producer and you guys do all the things really? you do. And, uh, and that was really cool. And so we did, we did quite a few of those. And then um, other people who came were doing uh, direct mail and things like that. Yeah. And that got me into direct mail. And yeah. as a matter of fact, one of the clients that uh, was doing uh, property tax reassessments in California so if your property property values go down, but your assessment is higher, yep. there was a business for a while in being able to help people get their homes reassessed, and then you would charge a fee for doing that. We charged like fifty dollars, and um, this guy came to me, and he was a smart guy, but he wasn't automated at all, and he wasn't scaled at yes. all. And so I said, uh, I said, you know, rather than paying a fee for services, why don't there are definitely some opportunities in your business? How about if we come in and uh, I'll, I'll tell you some things that I think you can do that'll help out, and yeah. we'll split the increase in the revenues. And I think during the first year, we ended up splitting up. We increased the business by about a million eight. We ended up yeah. with about a, a 900 grand a piece. That was kind of cool. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so was that, that awareness to actually see that opportunity to be like, all right, did you kind of make, were you, I mean, not saying making up as you went, but like, did was it something like you saw it and you kind of like tied two things together that there was no one whispering over your ear that oh no is... that's that's it's that's the same as you you know you see opportunities yeah. and you see yeah. something here and something here and you just kind of bring the two together so it sounds like your law degree and then you start under I have questions later about money because mm -hmm. I want to go a little I would like go... all of the money that you have I, <laughs> I you would just say, give that to me yes now. yeah that would be a great relationship I'm sure my seven kids would love that yeah <laughs> who's Mr. Rowan Okay, Daddy, <laughs> get me a new sucker. Um, no, but it sounds like it sounds like you you learned law. You had you had the entre entrepreneurial like mindset, but then you started learning about how to use money. Mm -hmm. Well, my capital. my undergrad was in accounting, so my okay. father was a tax attorney. Actually, still is a tax attorney. Yeah. 
and um, I was exposed to a lot of financy kinds of things yeah. as a kid. Uh, but I was also, I think, one of the first two things that I would say were very, very important in in that were um, finding a book called uh, The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson, yeah, okay. uh, which talked about really effectively buckets and paying yourself first and things like that. That was really uh, a helpful thing to find when I was 16, 17 yeah. years old. And, um, and the other was in the back of my dad's car, uh, there were some cassette tapes, uh, if you remember back in the day, yeah. from uh, oh, Nightingale yeah. Conant by Dennis yeah. Waitley called The Psychology of Winning. See, that's so funny. I was saying earlier today, the um, psych, I, I got the, the entrepreneurial, like, oh, my God. I, I, like, I was in the nursing school, and I walked into my volleyball coach's uh, office, and on his shelf was, uh, Lead the Field by Earl Nightingale, yep. and right next to it, Psychology of Winning, audio tapes. Stuck yep. them in my thing, and, and it was the first time I ever heard, well, I shouldn't say, that, like, I grew up in a great family, but it was the first time I ever heard, like, you can go do whatever you want to do, and you can create your own self-image, stuff like that. So that's pretty amazing. That's pretty funny. Now, I, I wrote down, I wanted to ask you about your dad, because mm -hmm. you had, everyone has said your dad's, like, amazing. Did, did he... Uh, push you towards law or how no. did no. no how did you get it how did you how or why did you go into law I I just enjoyed I, he he told me if you understand how to read financial statements then you speak the, the language of business which is yeah. interesting because I just read something by Warren Buffett that said exactly the same thing yeah. it is the language of business and so understanding financial statements and that sort of stuff and you don't have to be an accountant obviously but uh, that knowledge was yeah. amazing, and uh, and I saw that he was successful at business, and the other people that he worked with were successful, and uh, he was a tax attorney, and uh, I, the two things that I think are incredibly helpful to me, uh, educationally, are a founding in accounting and a founding in law. It, it's wow. amazing when wow. you're doing business if you have those two tools, you can kind of accomplish anything. Yeah, because, you know, one of the, if you look in our groups and people we associate with, what I was thinking about before our conversation was many of the questions guys have that prevents them to go into the next level has to do with licensing, acquiring abilities to, like, how do I put this licensing deal together? Yep. And, and really, you know, you get marketing guys and creatives are so, that's so far from their spectrum. Right. So you can fill some of that gap or that's where opportunity lies for you. So those are correct. So yeah, it's 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 kind of when you get to a certain level, it is all business, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's business relationships, business transactions, deals, negotiations. Those are all things that understanding the the basics, at least, yeah. of, of financial statements and the basics of how money works and how capital works and then how deals are structured yeah. is pretty invaluable. It's, so so let's talk about that. So how do you define money? How do I define money? Um, I would define money as, I consider money cash. I don't consider money stocks or yeah, yeah. things like that. So uh, in, in this kind of a strict, narrowly defined sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is money to you then? You're, like, what does it give you? Uh, money gives you the freedom to do the things that you want for yourself and other people. Awesome. That's, I mean, that's really all it is. So was there a time where money changed for you? Like, was there a time where you're like, holy crap, and it just started opening up? Meaning the definition changed? No, or? no, no, just your ability to acquire it and to see the power of it. Um, like the one deal you just shared a minute ago was pretty profound, but... Yeah, I, 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 my relationship with money is, is I feel like I can always, I have always felt like I can always generate it yeah and it's it's cool to have i've had it i've had less of it i've had more of it uh there hasn't really ever been a i mean uh, there are different points in your life where what you're able to do for other people and what you're able to do to collect your own experiences changes but yeah i think you can kind of do it anywhere yeah very what do cool. you think about that well, what's interesting was because, like, I mean, see, I grew up in a household where there was very little money mm -hmm. all the time. So my vision was not expanded based on uh, the idea that there's an abundance of money. Mm -hmm. That came through years of 
failure. <laughs> you know, years of grinding through right. the, the thing, you know. Um, okay, very good. So um, you're around high-level thinkers a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, you've been around. I mean, like uh, one question I got to ask, because I think some of our, our, our entrepreneurial buddies who, at least if they are, they're not aware of Guthy Ranker, who produced Tony Robbins infomercial, were you on that as well? Were you a part of that? Uh, only the negotiations. Oh, the no stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, what was what was one thing? What was some uh, something cool, unique about working with Guth Guthy? Um, I think. I mean, just I think those guys are visionaries, and uh, uh, what they were able to do in that space is and and it. You know, that's probably a good example of ha of really understanding scale because I'd say that was the first time that I was really exposed to how much opportunity exists if you're casting a wider net for a broader appeal as opposed yeah. to a very narrow one. Yeah. And I had always been, if you think about my, my upbringing and the education was around services yes. and consulting and things like that, not really selling products. Like how fast can you move the treadmill? Yeah. Even though you might be high priced, exactly. you're still on it. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. something you learn as an attorney yeah. too, is even if you charge $1,000 an hour, you're still limited to your 2,000 hours a year roughly that's that you right. can bill times $1,000 an that's hour, right. which is 2 million bucks. And that's nice, but that's, that's yeah. a pretty low limit given the universe of opportunity that's yeah. out there. So what's the biggest difference between the high level thinkers that you see that you're like, that guy or gal gets it versus why, you know, the other spectrum, because with dig Digital marker, Marketer, you guys provide amazing resources. Uh, Traffic and Conversion Summit um, is now you're, out, you're going outside of the U.S. Yep, we're doing Australia in, uh, <clears throat> in March and then hopefully the U.K. in fourth quarter and then Fantastic. we'll add. There's nine or ten of them that, uh, yeah, that yeah. hopefully we'll end up at. But that's an example of expanding the universe right mm -hmm. there. You know, so Traffic and Conversion Summit, which is a phenomenal summit. If you haven't ever gone to it, you've got to go. Everyone goes to it. Um, it's this year it's in San Diego and then all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, what's the difference between the people you see who like, oh, I, I get it versus those who can be in the same exact message, sitting in the same exact seats, <clears throat> excuse me, but just they don't, they're not, they're not getting results. The, well, <clears throat> results is all about implementation, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> so the stuff that you hear at, t at traffic and conversion, the stuff yeah. that you, can read in any of a whole bunch of books. Yeah. Uh, it almost, <clears throat> I believe that almost all of it works. Yeah. Right. If yeah. you watch yeah. an infomercial on TV about how to make money in real estate, if you buy real estate and you go through what most of those guys tell you how to do, it's probably going to work yeah. and you're going to make money. But most people don't do it. So that that's it. I mean, it, it all comes down to, it, there's two levels of accomplishment. I think the first is you have to take action to do it and implement. Yep. And the second.